Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode of The Design Factory. In the previous episode I showed you how important it is to design every user interaction possible, to properly handle all the various rollover effects or visual changes in case of an action with a specific element. Right now we basically fully design the entire homepage, if the user is logged in or not, and all the important rollover effects. You could think maybe now it's time to jump into code or maybe deliver our design to the designated developer. Unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. We have to take care of designing all the other pages, with all the iterations necessary to handle all the possible variations. But before doing that, we have to take a step back and decide how our website structure will look like. Defining a sitemap is not really a designer duty, but knowing how to create one and make it readable for every other person in your team is a skill you better have. The sitemap is part of the information architecture of a website, and it's necessary to report and keep track of all the pages, sections, user journey and variation of your entire website structure. This is not a complex task at all, but a well-defined sitemap is a huge help for everyone, especially if it's easily readable and understandable without any explanation for the person who built it. Try to define some specific iconography or graphic style for every important part of your sitemap. For example, if you have a bunch of main pages, let's identify those with a bigger font and maybe a thicker solid border around the name. If you need to list all the sections inside a page, you could use a dashed lighter line, so those sections will not be confused for standalone pages, but the sort of ghost style you apply to them will let them appear less relevant and less important compared to a page or a main page identified with a solid border. If you have a page that lists a lot of content and the page could change based on a specific user action, you could apply an icon to indicate that that specific section can be filtered in order to access different content, represented by a stack of rectangles, maybe. Same thing if you have a link pointing outside your website, that is not a real page, but just an external link. Make it clear with a globally recognizable icon for you or your developer. This flattened representation of your website structure will be incredibly helpful to identify all the entry points of your pages, where, how and when a user can or may access a specific page. Try to follow the user journey and see every time he has access to a link or an entry point to another page, and track it with a line. This will give you a complete idea of how your user could interact with your website, if they could get lost or not having a single access point to a specific page other than the main menu.
this is a really good moment to challenge the idea of your website, how many pages you want to create, how many sections, links, entry points and external call to actions you want to list. Remember that nothing is set in stone, everything can be changed and rethought from scratch. It's never too late for improvements. The sitemap doesn't have to be a piece of art, fancy or good looking. It has to be useful, light to read, not convoluted and easy to understand at the first glimpse. If your sitemap is not too clear, you can always use a legend at the bottom of your page, so everyone can easily understand it. Thanks for watching and I talk to you in the next one.